This is a jack of clubs that has a gigantic hole running straight through the center. And no, magicians, we're not going to be using black art today. You have one job. That job is to keep me honest. Make sure that this is a normal card. There are no gimmicks, no gaffes. And most importantly, make sure I don't switch it. So watch as closely as possible. All we're going to do is place the jack on top of the deck so you can get a good look, just like this. Watch that hole right in the center here on the card. As we move the hole in slow motion like this, right to the edge, you can get a good look. The last thing that happens is that I immediately restore that card. You can look as closely as you want. There is no signs that a hole ever existed on this Jack of Clubs. And the beautiful thing right now is that if you were here, you could keep this card and examine it 100%. Do you want to learn how to do it? Then just stick around for the rest of the video. Oh, it's the best video of the week. It's Tutorial Tuesday. Welcome back to all my subscribers. And on that note, 25,000 subscriber milestone. <sighs> happened a couple of days ago. I cannot understand how these keep happening, but thank you all so much. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button. By the way, if you want to win my very own personal gimmick from today's video, then all you need to do is make sure you're subscribed to the channel and comment anything down below. I'll pick a winner before next tutorial Tuesday's video and ship it to you free of charge anywhere you are in the world. Now, straight off the bat, before I explain to you how the routine works, I'm just gonna do some groundwork, do a bit of gardening, tell you about the crediting and sort of loose history surrounding this effect. As you know, or if you didn't know, there's hundreds if not thousands of published moving hole effects in magic. From Michael Close with his brilliant close-up piece of moving hole magic, to Michael Shatlin who has these incredible complicated gimmicks that do all these wonderful moving hole effects. Myself, I have the Acme hole effect that I created many, many years ago. And, and one of the effects in particular that I love so much is Nothing in Transit by Dave Forrest. It's a beautiful effect which uses a principle which many other magicians have used to make the whole move. His effect is a gorgeous piece of magic and I love the visual specifically. What didn't suit me was the routine in of the effect as a whole, mind the pun. And specifically with the magic I do, I like there to be a, 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 an element to the effect that makes even magicians go, what just happened? And that's the element that I felt I could add to that type of effect. And of course, there'd be many of the magicians that have used that specific principle in their way of doing a moving hole effect. I just thought he used it very, very well in particular. But again, I wanted to add my own spin on it to give it that extra kick of fool in nature so that you can perform it on social media or to people or to magicians and really have them scratching their heads the entire way through the routine. So with that being said and done, what is the extra element that I feel I'm bringing to the table here? For me, it's the no switching element to the effect. Normally when you see these types of effects, something happens, there's some dirty work that happens before or during the effect that makes you go, ah, that's when it, okay. It's like when you watch a card routine and the magician does the control and you're at a convention, most of the other magicians, when they spot it, go, ah, and they ignore the rest of the trick. And that's kind of what happens with these effects in general. The dirty work sort of happens before. So I thought, how can I flip that on its head? How can I say, watch closely, make sure I don't switch it, all the way through, do the entire effect and be like, okay, there's the effect, done. What are you waiting for? <laughs> and sort of get people to sort of want to touch that card. So that's what I've added here. So I'm not actually going to show you the entire build because it's so easy to make today's gimmick. I'm just going to show you what the gimmick is and what you need to do it. And then I'm going to show you the routine and how to perform it, which is the really important part because the structure of the routine is the key element in play here. And then I'm going to explain to you why it works at the very end of the video. So stick around for that. I think it's important for you to listen to that bit. Enough yabbering. Let's look at how the gimmick works. These are the gimmicks. We'll come back to those in a moment. The main thing I have is a circle cutter to cut holes in cards. This is linked on screen around here. Boop, boop, boop. You can get it in Amazon. It's just called a circle cutter and you place the card under it and it'll cut circles, right? I also have some magnets, double stick tape and some playing cards that are spare. So you can use some double backers to help you. But if you don't have any, you can just double back some cards together. The first thing I have is a jack of clubs, which I had placed on the surface. I stick it down to the surface so it doesn't move. And then using the circle cutter, I can cut a hole in the center, right? It's really, really simple to do, but you can use other, any other devices that work. So a regular card with a hole cut out. Now I keep that hole from that jack and I take a double backer. And again, if I don't have a double backer, I can just use any two cards stuck together. 
and then I'm going to stick the jack of clubs down the cutout into the center, okay? So you get a good look that jack of clubs is in the center of the card. What I do is, first of all, I place the jack on the double backer, take the circle of it, and stick it in and align it perfectly. And when you do it correctly, if you get the orientation right, then if this is the right way, let me just double check. This is the correct way for me. You stick it down and it looks pretty perfect once the card is on top of it, right? Now, the other things that you're gonna need is another card with a hole cut out. And on here, I've got magnets placed onto it. I've got a regular jack of clubs. This is just a normal jack of clubs that matches the one with a hole in it. And I've also got another double backer, but this is not a double backer that you get out of a deck. I've made this with double stick tape and two playing cards like that. So you can see this is just two cards stuck together. In the center there, I placed two magnets onto, in the double backer, two disc magnets. And again, you can find these boop, 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 boop on screen here and in the description below. They're very thin disc magnets. If you watch the rest of my other videos, you'll know the exact ones. And I placed them on there and line up the two magnets on this card so that when I stick these down, if I get the correct orientation, the circle, you just find it, there we go, will line up perfectly or as close to perfect as possible right there in the center. I didn't need to walk you through that, I just need to show you exactly what I've got. So one homemade double backer with magnets in, you can actually see that it's a little bit thicker than a regular card. A cutout piece that is the same shape and size of another card. A, a double backer with the cutout of the jack in the center. A regular jack. These all go under the circle piece. And finally, the jack of clubs here. That's all you need to do. I know I say all you need and you're probably thinking, oh, all I need, that's a lot. But actually, you can make this in a couple of minutes, the entire thing. Uh, and it was easier for me to just show you than to spend the time making it, I think, easier for you because you would have got very bored watching the very simple processes. Now let's learn the important stuff, how to perform this. The most important thing here is the routine in. It's been designed specifically to fool the spectator because you are going to do exactly what you tell them to look as closely for that you're not going to do, which is a switch. But it all happens at the perfect moment. So, the setup looks like this. You have your regular jack of clubs. You can keep this on you, separate, whatever you want to do. I'll put that to the side for a moment. Now, on top, I have the gimmick disc, which sits on top of this card, right in the center, in the correct orientation, in the center of the card. I have a face-up regular jack of clubs. Okay, so this is the double backer with the cutout stuck to the center. That goes on top of the regular jack of clubs face-up. This is a normal jack. And then I have the double backer that has magnets on the inside. Okay, so that all gets set up just like this, making sure I've got the correct orientation on my center disc, okay? And what's important here is that you check your light conditions because you don't want to cast shadow on that circle. So if you see, I can cast shadow there, but with the correct light, it becomes invisible. I start off, I keep the deck on my side, I don't show any attention to it. I let them look at this card and I tell them, keep me honest, make sure that I'm not going to switch this card. And now I bring the card towards myself, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically hook it over the circle. So I'm not going to put it on top and then pop it through. You'll notice that it wants to sort of hook in to the circle. So that's why I bring the, the deck towards myself just for a moment, as I literally, if you get a good close-up view, I just sort of hook this jack down and on through the circle. And as I bring it to them to, to show the circle in the center of the card, I'm pushing with my thumb at the back just to pop that circle and the cutout through so that everything is flush like this and sticking out of the card. But pointing towards the spectators, they can't see that. So now I'm going to do two things. I'm going to move that hole in slow motion and then restore the card. As I'm saying that, and I'm pointing here, I do two things. I, I run my finger around the circle to show where the hole is, but that allows me to apply pressure and pop through any of the card that may be stuck. The second thing is, it allows me to get a pinky break under the top three cards. So the, the, the card with a hole in it, the double backer that has the circle cut out, and the regular jack. And this is in preparation for what's about to happen. 
The first thing I do is I move the hole. By, and what I do is I grip the deck tightly because this magnetic card here is going to want to move. So I squeeze the deck tightly and then I pull firmly and that, and that will allow this to unstick. Because if you do it slow, it might stick to the card like that. But a quick movement hides the circle piece jump in. So I do a quick movement just to dislodge it from this centerpiece because the edges will try and stop it from moving. So I do a quick movement and say maybe that was too quick. Let me show you it slowly. And I can move it slowly and I'm pulling all three cards. There's three cards here, okay? I'm pulling all three cards making sure that they remain square. And this is actually a lot easier than you think because the pressure that's being put on from the disc magnet allows that to, to take place. So I'm here. I place my thumb under the break of the three cards, my other finger on top, I give it a, a quick motion to dislodge the circle, then I can move it slowly, and then finally I'm going to pull all three cards out at once, like that, and I'm going to quickly place these three cards on top of the deck. Now, you'll notice <clears throat> that I come here, I I pull all three away, and that's going to allow this this magnetic disc to drop on top of the deck, right? But you don't want to let them see that because in case you might accidentally have a shadow flash somewhere. Now I'm good right now, but you may. So I pull this out, the focus is here. No one's looking at this circle, don't forget, because they don't know the method. They're looking for the hole in the card. So I pull out and I just reposition this card on top of the deck. Now, this is the important part of the routine. This is the part of the routine that really sells it. This is the convincing part, the illusion. I do not run right now. You can see the, the, the cut lines. I don't mean because you're looking at the camera, I mean because you've made the gimmick. But if you look close, you can see the cut lines because you know what to look for. They do not know the method. Your audience don't know the method. They, if you're showing this to a layman, the chance are they haven't seen magic before. The chance are they haven't seen this sort of like level of magic before. They have not got a clue what to, what they're looking out for. So you may feel guilty at this point, but the whole routine is built around this very moment. Don't run. Because you say, look, there's no hole in the card. There's not even a sign of a hole in the card. And as I say that, I'm rubbing over as like a universal gesture of nothing being there. This is, look, there's nothing there. And now this is the sneaky part this is the really nice part. Because I've got a triple, I can sh turn the back to show, like this is a single card, and I say not on the back, and now I'm laying all three cards down on top of the gimmick and the hole, say not on the back, and now, now you're clear, now you're on the home straight. Say nothing on the back, they can look as close as they want there, and I do it at the same pace in. Say nothing on the back, look, there's not, not even a sign in the hole. I turn it over one more time, but this time I just turn over the single jack. This is the real jack now. But just to add some uh, consistency, I say, look, it's just one card, and you can go ahead and keep it. And what's beautiful is that now the top of the deck has been cleaned up as well, so there's nothing to find here. And just like that, the routine comes full circle, and you're left with a real clean card. But it's important to note the entire structure of this thing. Normally, the dirty work would happen at the start when they think the dirty work would be happening in these type of effects. In this routine, you're telling them that you're not going to switch the card. You're showing them the card is healed at the end of the effect when really it's not healed. And I just threw that card on the floor and it's back. So you're showing them the card is healed when it's actually not healed. But because you've made your gimmick so well, they can't tell that. And this is the sneaky part. This is what makes this all work. And then you show them the back of the card again, which is which is what they want to look at. They want to see more. And that's when the dirty work happens. But it's all about that one moment of you showing them a card that's healed that really hasn't. And that's why this illusion works so perfectly. So like we just said, the reason why this is so powerful and so fooling is because they are following that card all the way along the routine. They see you don't switch it at the start. They see the visual magic happen. And then they take a good hard look at what they think is a healed card. And I love in magic when you're doing something or saying something and doing the complete opposite. When you say, I remember Greg Wilson used a beautiful line, I've seen many other magicians employ it, where he's gonna ditch a, a, an object specifically like in his pocket and he'll say, now make sure my hands go nowhere near my pockets. And as he does that, he taps near his pockets and ditches the coin. But I love this element of, of doing the complete opposite of what you're saying. And this is what we're doing here 
with this routine. We're showing them, we're saying, look at that card, take a look, long, hard look at that card. You can see it's healed, you can see there's no hole in it. And there is, there is a hole in it, but only for a brief moment. And then you turn it round and do the same thing again. Look again, there's no hole in that card. And that's when the switch is happening. It's happening when they really think the switch isn't happening. They've, it's happening when they're examining the object. And that's the, I think the little kick, the little spice that we add to this routine, this principle, this effect that really takes it from a 10 up into an 11. So just remember, structure and routine in is everything. And with structure and routine in, you can take tricks that people know and love and you can flip them completely on their head and even fool people that are familiar with them. So like I said at the start, if you do wanna win this gimmick, then all you need to do is make sure you subscribe to the channel and comment anything down below. And I will post the very gimmick from today's video to wherever you are, anywhere in the world, completely free of charge. The winner will be notified before next Tutorial Tuesday's video. You may notice that I look very, very tired this morning. It's because it's before 8 a.m. I got up extra early to record this Tutorial Tuesday because me and Kaylee have been invited to the Looking for Erdnays premiere. It takes place in Frankfurt, Germany on Monday, the 4th of July. I was very kindly invited by Hans, the director, and my good friend Jeremy Griffiths, all the way over in LA, called me up and said, Lloyd, do you want to go and see the premiere for Looking for Erdnays? I was like, yeah, okay, cool. Where is it? He's like, oh, it's in Germany, Frankfurt, Monday. So me and Kaylee are going. We're heading out to London Airport at like 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. So I got a whole day of packing and getting things ready to go. First flight in, a, in like a year or two because of COVID and restrictions. So it's going to be action-packed. It's going to be super exciting. But I'll be vlogging the entire thing. So make sure you subscribe to the channel because I'll be dropping the vlog in the middle of the week. All right, time to pack. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you very, very soon in the next video. It'll be the vlog. Peace. Thank you.